Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. Now, in the last few videos, we've taken a look at how to install some various MFDs, uh, MFDs that don't come with Orbiter 2010. We're basically building a toolkit for ourselves so that we can be more efficient Orbinauts. And uh, here in this video, we are going to look at another MFD. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Let me switch the camera view here. This time we're going to be looking at Glide Slope 2, and the current release version is 2.3. And uh, you just go to Orbit Hanger to download this, and that's the link for it. Once again, I will put that link in the description down below so you don't have to try to, you know, catch it here in the video. As with all the previous uh, MFDs that we've downloaded, you know, you just come here, click on the download link. Don't click on the file over there because, again, that just opens up uh, this nothing page, basically. So click on the download link, save that zip file somewhere on your system where you can get to it conveniently. And uh, once you have it on your system, double click it, and it installs the same way as all the previous MFDs that we've looked at. You just highlight everything like so, drag and drop it into your Orbiter 2010 directory, and that's basically all there is to it. Again, as I've stated in the previous examples, you don't have to have the Orbiter SDK. Again, that's the software development, software development kit, and if you are not a C++ developer, then there's really no point in putting that on your system because you'll never even look at it. Uh, strictly speaking, you don't need the doc folder so you could just click the config and control click modules and then drag and drop those into your Orbiter 2010 directory, ignoring the doc and Orbiter SDK. But I think it's usually a good idea to go ahead and put the documentation on. So I would recommend uh, config, doc and modules. Uh, you do need the config. That's the requirement. That's not optional. And of course, you need the modules directory because that's where the DLL is at. So once you have the uh, at least the config and modules dragged and dropped into your Orbiter 2010 directory, uh, go to your Orbiter Launchpad like usual, go into Modules, and locate the Glide Slope 2 module in the list, which it's probably under Miscellaneous. That's where most of them, yeah, here it is. Under Miscellaneous, it's called GS2, so make sure that you have a check box next to that. All right, so that's it for the installation. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It gets easier after you've done, you know, one or two of these. Uh, they're pretty much all they pretty much all install the same way. But let's take a look at some usage examples of how to, uh, you know, some ways that we can use Glide Slope Two. Now, in a lot of cases, I can't cover every possible way that you can use an MFD in these, you know, introductory type of videos. You know, I'm only allocating 30 minutes to myself here, so I can't cover everything that there is to cover. But let's just take a look at uh, some examples again. So here I've just got the quick start scenario loaded. This is a scenario that comes with Orbiter 2010 by default. Uh, it's located in the checklists folder, I believe, or it's one of those folders. You can find it. And it has you in the Delta Glider um, at KSC, just sitting on runway 33, ready to take off. So let me switch over to this view so we have bigger MFDs to look at. And let's bring up Glide Slope 2 and just uh, see what we can do with it. Now, one thing that's maybe a little different about this MFD as compared to uh, most of the other ones that we've seen, like, you know, Map MFD, Orbit MFD, and even some of the add-ons like burn time calculator and base sync. Uh, Glide Slope 2 has different pages that you can access to get to get to different information. This isn't entirely dissimilar from Arrow Break. If you recall, when we were looking at Arrow Break, it had that uh, that sphere or that rather that circle, and then we would press page and then PRJ to go to a different to go to a different view. Glide Slope 2 has different views or different pages or different modes of operation. So this default, this is how it came up by default. And this mode of operation, um, I'm not going to cover because I don't use it. Simple, simply as that. So the way you can go to the different 
modes of operation is just by pressing the mod button. So press mod and you get this view. Press mod again and you get this view. Press mod again and you get this view. And mod one more time in your background to where you started. So that's how you can switch between the different modes of operation. Just mod, 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 and it goes in a circle. One mode of operation that I find quite useful with GlideSlope 2 is the HSIT. Um, that stands, I believe, for Horizontal Situation. This particular mode of operation allows you to use GlideSlope 2 kind of like a GPS. So let me show you kind of how that works because this is one way that I use it all the time. If you've seen any of my uh, KSC to Wide Awake International speed runs, you'll see that one of the MFDs that I always have open when I'm doing that speed run is GlideSlope 2 and I have it open in this mode of operation in the horizontal situation. So what I want to do here is I want to target some other base because currently uh, we're sitting here at KSC and we're not really targeting much of anything. So the way we configure this page now that we you know, you know we press mod to get to this page, the way we configure it uh, quite conveniently is the CFG. So we click CFG and you'll notice that it says base Cape Canaveral. Well, I'm at Cape Canaveral right now. And if I want to go to some other base, then obviously I don't want Cape Canaveral targeted. So the way we select bases is by the PB and NB button. That's pay, uh, previous base and next base. So if I press PB one time, it goes to uh, the Barrett C base. And if I press NB, then I go back to Cape Canaveral. So I can go back and forth between the bases using these two buttons. So let's say that I want to select Habana, uh, which is just off the southern tip of Florida, so it's not too far away. So I can just press NB or PB until I see that one in the selection, and there we go. Now it asks me what runway I want, and it defaults to uh, whatever landing pad the uh, base has available. Well, I'm in the Delta Glider. I don't really want to land on a landing pad. I would prefer to land on a base, or rather a runway. So selecting runways works the same way as selecting a base. Instead of PB and NB, we use PR and NR. That's previous runway and next runway. So you'll notice here, runway, this probably should say pad, but nevertheless, runway. So I'm going to press NR to go to the next one. That's pad 2, pad 3, pad 4, and then finally we get the runway selections. So we've got runway 6 to choose from, uh, runway 24, and that's it. So a shortcut to get to the, the runways would actually be to go PR, which would be previous runway that goes backwards through the selections. So we're going to select Habana as our target just to show how this works, but I do want to show one thing here. Let's go back to uh, previous until we get to... Um, let's go to the Barrent C. I believe this is one of the bases that only has landing pads. Let me find out. Yeah, if you see I press PR or NR, the only option is pad number one. You'll find in Orbiter that not all bases have runways. So just be aware of that. If you're planning to land at a base you want to, if, and you want to do a runway landing, you want to make sure that that base has a runway. So you might see like, uh, you know, Wide Awake International obviously has runways, but maybe Al Anbar. I'm not sure if it has runways or not. It does not. It just has a landing pad. So let's go to the next one. Uh, China Lake pads, and it, that one does have runways. So just, just be aware that not all bases have runways. Now let's go back to the uh, Habana base that we selected. So let's go, um, I don't know which way is faster, so let's just go previous until we see it. I don't think they're necessarily alphabetized. Maybe they are. So it'd probably be faster to go this way. Yeah, it looks like they were alphabetized. So we've got Habana, and it remembered our runway selection. That's pretty cool. And what we want to do, maybe before we take off and fly to Habana, is let's kind of look at the base layout. And we can do that by pressing VB. And this is something that was added uh, to the newest version of GlideSlope 2. So if you happen to be using an older version of GlideSlope, you won't have this. But this is a very cool, uh, again, sort of a GPS type of feature that gives you the layout of the base. So you can decide, you know, how you need to arrive at the base. Whenever you're coming in for a landing, if you if you arrive at the airport and let's say you 
are coming this way through the airport, then you're going to have to, you know, turn really wide, go way out, and then turn and come back in. So if you know the if you know the base layout before you arrive, then you can plan on arriving like out here. So that way, by the time I, you know, arrive near the base, I can just come right in and land. So let's take a look at, you know, some other uh, base layouts just to get an idea of how that works. Let's go, actually, how do I get out of this page? I guess I just hit OK. So let's look at uh, Wide Awake International. You know, it's a popular one. So let's go backwards here to Wide Awake. There we are. And let's VB to view the base layout. And here it would help if we zoom out one level at least. But you can see here, this is how all the runways are laid out at Wide Awake International. So we know if we're going to fly to Wide Awake, we don't want to end up at the base, you know, way to the north, because then we're going to be coming in like that. So, so you get the idea there. So let's go CFG. Let's go back to uh, Wide Awake, or rather Havana. And let's hit OK. And now we have some information here that we can use to help us uh, determine our flight but it really it really doesn't give us uh, a lot of a lot to go on until we actually get up off the ground and get into the air and start flying so let's just actually kind of do that and keep an eye on this MFD and you'll see how how this functions as we start to take off and get into the air so let me just go full power on the main engines and I'm just gonna use the keyboard here so my control is going to be a little sloppy because I don't feel like dragging the joystick out at the moment. Once we get up to about 160 meters a second, we'll lift up, lift off. Yeah, somewhere around there, so back elevator, race landing gear. And we know we're currently flying basically north and we know where Havana is before we ever take off. We know it's to our south. So we're going to turn immediately. We're going to bank hard left or right. doesn't really matter. We just want to turn around about 180 degrees. And just keep an eye on that MFD uh, Glide Slope 2 down there in the bottom left. And you'll kind of start to get an idea already of what it's telling us. But let me get completely turned around and headed toward Cuba first. A little bit more to go. I greatly prefer flying with the joystick. It's so much smoother, but... Again, just for this little demonstration, I didn't want to drag it out. Okay, so here we are. Let's uh, just go ahead and fly at this heading now. Basically, what we're looking at here with this MFD is we're looking at a, uh, a projected path, a projected flight path that we need to fly if we're going to get to the target base. And one of the very useful features for this MFD is it tells us you know how far we are to the left or to the right of our of our track if you've ever done any flying in a flight simulator you know like x-plane or microsoft uh, flight simulator if you know anything about how the like a vor works then this is not completely dissimilar to that although instead of you know tracking needles back and forth we're just tracking the straight line what i'm looking at here is that notice this little arrow key i don't know how well that shows up in the video playback but there's a little arrow to the left of this uh, center line. And what that's telling me is that it, it's telling me that I need to move to the left in order to get on track. I'm currently 3.9 degrees off from the ideal track. If I kept flying on the straight line right now, I would pass Cuba to the west. So if I want to get there, if I want to get there, uh, and pass over the top of the airport, I need to bank a little bit to the left and watch that uh, degree. It'll come down, it'll be, you know, 3.0 and so on. And you can also see this little like carrot thing here getting closer to the center. Once that's at 0.0, .0 I am centered and I'm almost there. So let me actually 0 0.2 and basically like that. Again, you don't need to worry about flying at exactly at 0, 0.0 for the whole time. But just periodically throughout your flight, you just want to make sure that you're not drifting farther and farther off, you know, 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees. And the closer you get, the more sensitive it becomes, of course. So that's, that's just one usage example of how to use this MFD. And it also tells us our range, you know, how far away we are 
uh, from from the base and currently we're 800 kilometers out and of course if we wanted to get there much more quickly we could uh, climb up real high in the atmosphere and you know cruise over to Havana at a couple thousand meters per second we would be there in no time but let me just bank a bit to the let's, let's bank a bit to the left and you'll just see that this is getting farther and farther off track so we know that we're you know heading kind of the wrong direction and we need to bank a bit to the right if we want to arrive at our destination so there's one usage example of glide slope MFD where you can basically use it uh, like like a like a GPS almost all right let me go ahead and exit out of orbiter and let me bring up another scenario to show another way that you can use this MFD <clears throat> Just bear with me while I go through the uh, directories here and select the select the next scenario. And let me take a sip of water while that's loading. Okay, once this loads up, we're going to be in the standard delta glider, and we are coming up to entry interface. This is this scenario picks up where we're in orbit. Let me just switch things around. We were, com we're coming down from the International Space Station. We've already performed our deorbit burn, and we're wanting to land at Cape Canaveral. So let's bring up Glide Slope 2. And again, it, this, it defaulted to this mode of operation, and for whatever reason, I actually never use the digital descent data. Um, I've just never taken a good look at it, so it might be quite useful, but I've just never looked at it. So let's go through the pages again. Let's press Mod. And you'll notice there's the horizontal situation. In this particular case, this screen isn't going to be what we're going to use at the moment. This will come in to play later on in our deorbit and landing procedure. But currently, this isn't the screen that we want. So let's press mod again. And we, now we have the uh, VSIT screen. And I believe this stands simply for vertical situation. And let's just press mod one more time so we can see this uh, tape data. This is probably useful to people that might be more familiar with flight simulators or something, but this is another screen that I personally don't use uh, for in Glide Slope 2, but it's pretty comprehensive. You can tell what it's telling you. You know, this is your current speed. Um, I believe this is like your deceleration, your current altitude, uh, your vertical speed, and your vertical acceleration. So it's easy enough to understand, but I just don't actually use this screen. So let's go uh, to back, press mod a few more times, and get over to the VSIT screen, or vertical situation. Now, this one is basically telling us what our flight profile should look like under like an ideal situation. Now, currently, we are in the Delta Glider, and I don't know that we have the Delta Glider selected for our profile so first of all before we worry about what this is what this is saying let's press cfg and let's pick a different series of vessels because we the currently it has the xr selected for the for that flight profile and we're not in the xr and the uh, flight characteristics between the xr and the delta glider are different enough that we probably would prefer to have a different profile the way we select different profiles is by pressing the PG and NG buttons. Works very uh, similar to, you know, PB and NB for previous space and next space, or PR and NR for previous runway and next runway. In this case, we want PG or NG, and if we press PG, we now have the Delta Glider selected. Uh, we don't really have to worry too much about what base we have selected at the moment, but we do have the correct base selected. That's fine, and the runway really doesn't matter either at the moment but we can select uh, runway 33 and then hit OK. Now what we're looking at, there is the green line here and there's the yellow line here. The green is our airspeed and that's indicated here, you know, TAS, true airspeed. And the altitude is uh, this yellow line. What this vertical situation is telling us is that under, under an, like an ideal situation, we would prefer to follow this profile with our airspeed 
and we would prefer to f follow this profile with our altitude. In other words, you notice this is uh, this line here is our actual altitude. We are currently above the altitude that's suggested by this flight profile. And our airspeed is slightly higher because you can see that green line there is above this green line. So this green line is telling us that our airspeed is currently a bit higher than the suggested airspeed. The idea here is that if you can if you can land like a like let's say you have a landing where you deorbit from the ISS and you come in and you have like what you would call like the perfect landing or the very best landing or at least the best landing that you've ever done what you can do is you can actually save that flight profile and then the next time you fly next time you go to the ISS and you know deorbit then you can have this profile which says well this is what you did last time this is the flight profile that you thought was really good and you want to try to copy that on all subsequent flights so that you can have an equally good landing profile. So you can see here we're coming down, we're uh, getting now to the point where our altitude is getting in line with the suggested altitude. So if we look at our vertical speed, if we bring up surface MFD, you can see our vertical speed is 148 meters per second in the negative. And as we continue going down, uh, as, as we continue to go forward, we are going to dip below the uh, this profile here. So if we want to stay on line with that profile, we would need to bank our vessel a bit out this way, which will uh, make our vertical speed you know, come up a bit. Actually, that probably won't happen until we get down a little bit lower because we're still, we're still a bit high. But we would basically say if we want to copy this previous flight profile to the T, then we would want to have a, a lower vertical speed at this point. In other words, it would need to be closer to zero because currently it's negative 140 and we're dropping below what the previous flight profile was. And we're still a little faster than this pro flight profile. There's really nothing you can do to fix your uh, vertical speed or rather your 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 airspeed or orbital speed when you're still this high up in the uh, atmosphere because there's just not enough dynamic pressure to slow us down at this point but as we go forward as we get deeper and into the thicker air we will be able to have more control over our altitude and speed so let's just go ahead and warp time forward a little bit to get down into the lower part of the atmosphere we want to get down to you know 60 kilometers or so so we can actually have some control so just go ahead and warp time forward a little bit and he, actually even at this altitude i now have much more control because my dynamic pressure is starting to get to a number where i can you know where flight controls actually matter and you can see i've dipped quite far down below the suggested altitude so at this point in the flight I am quite a bit lower than what this profile suggests. Now, I actually don't agree with this flight profile for the uh, for the standard Delta glider. I don't think this is a good one. Actually, I don't think it's it's not that I don't think it's good. It's just that I don't think it's uh, realistic. So, uh, one of these days, I'll fly my own uh, profile down from the ISS, and I will replace this profile with my own. But just I'm just kind of trying to show the idea here. Uh, notice as I bank out. You know, as I roll back closer to the center position here, my vertical speed uh, is, is climbing. It's getting closer to zero. And if I want to make that happen a little faster, I can put in a little bit of elevator trim. If you watch the trim over here as I press the delete key a few times, I can bring the nose of the vessel up a little bit. Let's actually bring it up a lot for now, just to kind of really exaggerate this feature. And what you'll see happen as you'll see this line here and remember this line the the one that's more intense in color this is the actual flight profile this is what's happening right now and you'll notice it'll start to climb it'll get closer to this suggested line of course as i climb higher in the air it's going to be more difficult for me to slow down so my true airspeed this will continue to stay above that line so the idea is basically that you'll find a, a flight profile for coming down from orbit and then once you have one that you like you can repeat that in the future just by watching this vertical situation indicator 
and then trying to keep your vessel in line with that flight profile to the best of your ability. And there are all kinds of things that will make a big difference in your ability to follow the flight profile. Like right now, you'll notice I've got the air brake out. If you happen to come in and land, uh, or if you deorbit and do your reentry with the air brake closed, then it's going to change, obviously, these characteristics. Um, if you come in with the uh, Delta Glider at a, at a little bit more of an AOA, like for example, if I press F8 and I turn off RCS mode and turn on pitch, I can press the number two to lock the elevons into the up position and then turn off surface controls. The elevons are now locked and you'll notice that I now have an, uh, actually let me kill rotate. You'll notice by doing that, that I went from an AOA of about one degree to you know what it currently is, which is a 8.2. And that's gonna make a big difference in your flight profile. So all these different things are gonna really change the way you come down through the atmosphere. And once you find something that you really like, you can actually save it, that this has a save feature where you can save that profile. And then you can later on in your next flight, you can go into the CFG and you can change the GS. Like, for, like if I were to save one, I might call it uh, DG-David. So I would press PG or NG and I would just go through these until I saw the one that said, you know, DG-David. Okay, so hopefully that little bit of a explanation is enough for that one. It's a, it, it's a little difficult to explain this one without having a full flight. But let me exit out of Orbiter and let me show one more usage example of this before we end this part of the video. So let's bring up another, another scenario. Take a sip of water while that's loading. My throat's kind of hurting me today. had a doctor's office appointment today and they um, put a probe down into my esophagus and my throat's just really hurting ever since. Okay, so let me kind of kill everything here. Let me go down to uh, one, uh, 0 0.1 just for a moment. In this scenario, I came down from the ISS, already performed the deorbit burn, and we came down through the atmosphere and I'm now about 1,000 kilometers away from the base and I've already slowed down to 4,400 meters a second. So let's look at how we can use uh, glide slope 2 in, in this case. When you, when you get down to the point in your, in your deorbit where you're getting relatively close to the base and after you've slowed down enough we can start to use glide slope two to help us uh, to help us target the base, and it's kind of that GPS feature that I was talking about. So I, well, I got to roll out. I'm, um, I, I got to fix the situation. Just give me a second here. Attitude off. Lock the elevons. This scenario wasn't saved at a very good spot. Okay, my vertical speed's getting better under control. I was just getting really deep there. My dynamic pressure's getting out of control. But once you uh, once you're relatively close to the base, you know, a thousand kilometers or something like that, you can bring up glide slope two and press mod until you get over to that uh, HSIT screen, the horizontal horizontal situation. Press CFG to make sure you have the correct base selected, and then NB, you know, RB to get the runway that you want or rather PR, uh, NR, to get the runway that you want. So let's go with 33. And here again, we can select a different vessel, but for this, for this sake, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, this only matters for the, that uh, vertical situation. It doesn't matter for the horizontal. So now you can see that we've got um, uh, KSC selected and we've got our runway selected. And what we can do is we can just, we can now use the MFD as kind of a GPS to help us guide our way over to the base and make sure that we arrive at the base already lined up with the runway. So you can see, you know, we're getting well out of, uh, 
well off path here so in a little bit I'm gonna want to turn the vessel and roll the other way I'm not too worried about this left and right at the moment because I'm still traveling really fast for now I just want to focus more on slowing down what we can also do is we can zoom out a bit so we can just kind of see you know KS the, the runways over here and it's really helpful to know you know how we need to arrive at the base you can see you know currently we're heading way off out here so eventually we're gonna here very soon we're gonna need to roll over but having this information available is very helpful to be able to pinpoint the direction that you need to arrive at the base and I also like to press the H AC button until I get LO or RO that just means open I don't plan on arriving at the base and flying a full circle around the hack okay we're pretty far off now so let's actually do our uh, bank maneuver so let me turn uh, attitude off, surface controls back on, and let's roll over the other way. Actually, let me come back to the screen. And let me put in just a little bit of up elevator trim to... Uh... Again, this isn't this here isn't intended to be a landing by any means I'm just trying to show how this NFD works let me close the air brake okay, again we got our vertical speed just about under control and now we need to bank pretty hard to the uh, to the right and that'll bring us more in line with the base let's kind of zoom in on our position a little bit and actually we need to obviously bank really hard to the to the right if we're going to land at that base but you can see again we've got the range to the base is about 270 kilometers so we've still got a little ways to go and we need to uh, we can tell here uh, we don't have our number down here telling us how far off we are but we can see this lines almost at a right angle to where we're at so we need to bank very hard to the right in order to bring ourselves into alignment with the base I'm just going to kind of fly this profile here and let me just go full up elevator just so we can bank more aggressively and get lined up with the runway. This particular uh, scenario wasn't saved at a very good point. I thought it was I thought it was good, but it's not. So we are at 2400 meters a second. That's our velocity. We're 228 kilometers out from the base and we can see again we're we're basically straight north of the base and we can tell that because we're you know the runways over here what I can also do to help expedite my turn is go to pitch control and full up elevator and then lock the elevons and then go back to rotation and you can actually see here this gives us a predicted prediction of how how we're gonna turn And let me go back to this view for a bit because these MFDs are larger. And you can see that if we want to land at the runway, we need to basically have this prediction turn all the way to this point. Because that green little spot there, if I zoom in a bit, that's actually where the runway's at. And if we want to change to a different uh, runway, actually let me adjust my bank out here a bit. If we want to pick a different runway, we can go to the CFG screen if we have, for some reason, chosen the wrong one. Um, we can adjust that here. So let's go to runway 15. Let's... There we go. And that gives us a new path. So instead of coming way out here and turning around, we're, gonna, we're saying that we're just going to fly straight into runway 15 here. And now we're 70 kilometers out from the base and let me just kind of zoom in a bit the closer you get to the base the more zoom you can have but if I follow this line if I follow this profile I'll be right on track with the runway and if you if you watch any of my other videos for deorbit and landing you'll kind of see how that works a little bit better again this scenario just wasn't saved at a very good spot so I kind of apologize for 
not being able to show this very well here, but hopefully you can kind of see how this works. There's the runway according to this MFD. Let me throw the air brake back out, slow things down a little bit. And it looks like I'm going to pass the runway now. The runway's to the right of me. So if I kind of look outside, yeah, the runway's basically right there. So let's actually go back to the CFG screen and let's reselect runway 33 instead. Hit OK, and this gives us a new profile to fly. And let me just do this. Take out all the elevator trim. So trim is now zero. And let's go ahead and let's leave the air brake out for now because we still need to slow down quite a bit. But I can come back to this view now and I can turn RCS off and just use uh, surface controls now for the rest of the flight. So if I were wanting to actually land at that base, what I would do is I would just, I, I'm too close for this velocity to turn around because I'm only 52 kilometers out and I'm still traveling quite fast. So I would actually want to go down range to maybe 60, uh, maybe 70 or 80 kilometers and then begin turning back around. And I'll, I'll actually go ahead and show how that will work even though this video is getting over the 30 minute point by a pretty good margin, but I don't want to record a separate video for Glide Slope 2. Kind of letting myself get down a little bit lower to help slow things down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to say that's good enough. We're 80 kilometers out, according to the range, so I'm going to turn to the side and just just bank really hard to the, uh, to the right and just turn myself completely around, and then you'll be able to see better in Glide Slope 2 how, how we're lining up with the runway. And again, I use this particular MFD for this horizontal situation uh, mode of operation. I use this all the time for my landings because it really, it basically lets you see, you know, what the runway and ground look like with when you can't see the runway and the ground. You know, when you're flying away from the base, you can't see the runway or the ground, but if, but this MFD tells you, you know, where it's at and what it looks like. Okay. All right, now let me reset, or clear. All right, now I am uh, 80 kilometers out from the base, and if I fly, let me put in some elevator trim here, and if I fly straight toward uh, this area over here, I'll be in line with the runway. That's what it's telling me. So I can either try to get into this track, which I don't really want to do, or I can just kind of fly over here which means I need to bank a little bit to the right and then I'll be in line with the runway in that direction so let's kind of take a look at what that looks like go ahead and cheat and use a little bit of uh, fuel or a little bit of main engine just to speed things up you can actually see the runway now at this point so you can see compared to here what it looks like on glide slope 2 I'm just using, using a little bit of main engine to speed things up. Normally I would, you know, obviously do all these types of landings dead stick. Okay. So let's kind of turn in a little bit and maybe get in line with this path, this curved path, because we need to get in front of the runway where if we fly straight to it, we'll be at a very hard angle to the runway and that's not going to work. So this kind of this MFD is kind of indicating that we need to kind of turn and curve in, and then we'll be at a straight path with the runway. A little more main engine just to speed things up. You can see we're getting in line. Here's this is our actual path. Let's take. 
take out some of that main engine. And you don't have to follow this exactly. You know, if we're running a little bit low on velocity, we can kind of cut through this corner and just fly straight over to this point. But the idea is that we want to get in front of the runway. We don't want to arrive at the runway as we're crossing over the center of it because that's not going to work. So you can see now I'm flying straight toward this part. And then when I get over here, I'm going to have to do a hard bank to the left in order to have the runway in front of me. And once I get to that point, I'll go ahead and end this video. And hopefully that will be a sufficient explanation for the very basics of glide slope. Let's go forward a little faster. Okay, now let's begin banking. And we're going to have to put in a bit of up elevator to expedite our turn a little bit. But you can see how, you know, how this is helping me get lined up with the, with the runway so that by the time I come out of this turn, I will be almost right in front of the runway. Looks like I started my turn a little bit late because I'm, I'm going past that line, but that's okay. I can still correct for that. Didn't mean to hit that button. Come out of my turn. One more engine just to speed things up. And again, sorry about the sloppy flight here, but I don't have my I don't have my joystick here, so everything's kind of messy. And now we just kind of we can pretty much just follow visual flight at this point. We don't necessarily even need this MFD anymore, but you can kind of see um, I'm going too far to the left now. But you get the idea for how that helps you get lined up with the runway without being able to see it. That That's really helpful when you're at a really, really high altitude and you've got a lot of fog and everything in the way and you can't really necessarily make out where the runway's at. You can see here in the MFD you know very clearly where it's at 100. and you can zoom in on your location when you get really close 50, so 40, 30, 20, oh, you get the idea 10. all right so let me exit out of that and that's going to be it for uh, this part of the absolute beginner guide and I do recommend that you uh, check out this MFD it's really useful and it was recently updated and has some um, has more features that it didn't have just even a couple of weeks ago if you have any questions, go ahead and leave your questions in the comments area down below. Uh, leave me comments in general. Like the video if you like the video. Dislike the video if you dislike the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And I will see you in the next video.